Okay, now we're ready. Um, so we had done great searches about like buttons and USB and SPI flash, but I realized like, we hadn't actually done a great search about crystals and oscillators. And I thought that that would be a good thing to chat about because um, you know almost every microcontroller and also audio chipsets and some USB chipsets require uh, a crystal oscillator. And um, I thought it'd be good to show how to find the right crystal for your product because not having the right crystal, um, it's really easy to get the wrong ones, like, you know, misspec them and then nothing's booting, nothing's working and it's just like confusing and weird and frustrating. So, you know, getting the right matching crystal for your chip is a good idea. So I pulled up the, um, the Sci-5 FE310 uh, data sheet and, um, you know, like many chips, you are required to have a USB crystal. Now, I will say that there are some chips, and these are some of my favorites, that when you, that they have an internal oscillator that's like, you know, somewhat precise. And when you connect them over USB, they actually can synchronize with the precision one kilohertz um, pulse that comes over USB. There's this one kilohertz, like on the dot pulse that the host computer sends. And the chips can synchronize with that and they tighten up their um, built-in resonator. They, they PLL against it to be able to get good enough um, 12 megahertz or 24 megahertz or 48 megahertz internal oscillation to be able to do USB, which requires pretty good timing. Um, and like the SAMD21 is an example of that. So really like that, SAMD21 can do it. I think the SAMD51 can only also do it. Um, famously, the FT232RL uh, was one, and now the uh, Scilabs CP210X series. Um, Historically, USB to serial converters required a crystal. Now they don't because they synchronize over USB. But in this case, um, this chip does not connect over USB. And so you do need to have a crystal driver, crystal oscillator. So uh, you'll need a crystal. You'll want, want to look at the megahertz. Of course, it's very important, 16 megahertz. And you want to find the capacitive load. In this case, it's 12 picofarad and the ESR. I will say you do not have to be, you have to be on the dot for the, the crystal frequency. You can't do 11, you can't do 12, you can't do 20, you have to do 16. For the loading capacitance in the ESR, you can, you can have a little bit of variation. It does not have to be like on the dot, on the dot, although if you can, the better it is. So uh, going to DigiKey now. All right, so let's look for a crystal. This is like, I feel like I'm playing Final Fantasy. Kind of go find the crystals. So, um, there are three, well, there's like crystal kits, which are super cool. There's crystals, there's oscillators, and there's resonators. And it's a little bit confusing, which is which. So let's go to resonators first, because those are like the, the easiest to explain. So resonators are like these things. And they're ceramic resonators and what's neat about them is they have three pins because they actually have like the capacitive loading built in and you can whenever you have a crystal you can pretty much use a resonator it's not going to be nearly as precise it's going to be i think you know plus or minus 0.2 percent plus or minus 15 percent but what's really nice is they often have this built-in capacitor which means they're smaller they're easier i i love these for boards that don't have high precision uh, timekeeping, but you still need to have some sort of crystal. So let's actually uh, show an example because I have one on my desk. So if you have, I'm going to get real close because these things are small. Let's get small. Okay. So here you've got the, uh, you can't see it, but it says at Mega 328. And the at Mega 328, uh, while it does have an internal resonator, uh, RC uh, oscillator, you know, you want to, um, to have really good timekeeping, you want to have a crystal resonator. And to keep this board inexpensive and small, you'll see it's got this three pin resonator here. It's, I think, a 16 megahertz resonator. Um, less expensive, is it good enough? Yeah, it is. Because the only really strong timekeeping thing that you, you have to do on this chip 
is uh, you are and the you are plus or minus 0.2 percent is way better than what um, the internal chip can match to anyways like you're not going to be able to uh, you know for a lot of frequencies the divider for the UART peripheral isn't going to be that good anyways it's within one percent is fine so um, ceramic resonator is a-okay much cheaper only one component super easy to pick in place I do love them in many situations they are not high precision devices but in many cases they're good enough okay so you know think about how how accurate do you need your timekeeping that's what you have to keep in mind all right so that's a resonator um, okay next up is oscillators so oscillators so let's pick out you know actually I should have probably done a little more research because I want to make sure that I have the right naming let's pick out a uh, 16 megahertz here yeah they have like every frequency known to man okay open the data sh whoa nope let me open that okay so this is a oscillator and an oscillator now I think of it, I think this is actually a crystal let me see maximum rise time it doesn't have the pinouts okay so in general while I don't see the pinouts here can we go to the computer or what do you want to oh sorry yeah sorry, I thought we were at the computer yeah. um so in general oscillators when I say oscillator and this I don't have a pinout but I'm going to assume this is the right thing an oscillator is is a basically it's a crystal with a little like a uh, driver inside of it and it also usually has the you know capacitors inside of it it comes it looks just like a crystal but you give it ground you give it power and it gives you a signal output so you don't need to have two pins it's for chips that require a clock in but don't have a built-in crystal driver in this case how would you know because for um, the Sci-5 chip, it tells you that there's a crystal in and a crystal out. If you have a crystal in and a crystal out, you're not going to use an oscillator. You're going to use a crystal. Or if you're a cheapskate, you can use a resonator. Um, but there are sometimes chips that do, do not have an input and output. They only have an input. And in that case, you need to use an oscillator. Um, for example, the WM8960, uh, or it's 6980, the uh, audio driver chip that we use on the audio bonnet it's an i2s um you know input output you know speaker headphone jack microphones it's intending to have a 24 megahertz uh m clock signal um, it doesn't have a crystal driver and so we use a crystal uh, oscillator on that to give it a nice clean 24 megahertz um, as a square wave into the chip so now you know the difference but let's go back and we're going to go for a crystal. So uh, oscillators tend to be a little bit more expensive. So that's the, the thing. Oscillators are kind of the highest end. Um, they're you know beautiful and wonderful. They have all in one. You know you have to do almost no work. You don't have to worry about loading capacitance or anything. Usually you give it three volts, you get signal out. Beautiful. But they're a little more expensive because they have more stuff. So let's go to crystals. The crystals, you have two pins. Uh, sometimes the package has four pins, but the device itself has two pins. The first thing you want to do, other than, of course, set your active, is you want to pick your frequency. Um, you know, pretty much every value you could possibly want is available here. But you definitely, you know, it, and it's like some of them are like really weird values, like 16.000312 megahertz. But, you know, there's some, there's some use for it, right? There's some device or um, you know multiplier that it works out that that's a valuable frequency in our case we just want a solid 16 megahertz to match what the data sheet says um, next up I'm just gonna look for items in stock and then you have a couple of choices um, the first thing is you want to maybe look at the packager case because there's pretty much two packages ish for crystals you can either have this gigantic chunky HC49 package and they come from like this like nice velt like thin like top hat version to um, like they get like really tall 
And sometimes they get like really tall. Let me show you some of the really tall ones. Sometimes like, they're a little scary how tall they are. They get like super tall. You know, they have surface mount versions, they have through hole versions. Oh yeah, tall, very tall. And these are like classic crystals. Like if you open up your old electronics, you're gonna find these in there. Um, you know, these are the classic tin can speakers. And uh, if we go to the overhead again real fast, we can look at, uh, our, this Arduino has one, right? It's got that lozenge HC49. Um, benefits of the HC49, ultra generic, extremely low cost, but like really big. So uh, I think we're gonna pass on those. So we're gonna select not those. Oh, there's also the cylindrical can. These are like, uh, these, they're also kind of like a cousin of those, those chunky ones. Um, sometimes you see those also. They're a little smaller, but they're through hole only. Um, again, very inexpensive. The, the rest of them are basically, you can get SMD and they all kind of look like this, which is really nice. It's a standard pinout. They're nice and flat. Um, they come in different sizes. Uh, there's like, um, you know, from two millimeters by 1.6 up to like 12 by 4.6. You know, in general, I try to, I stick to the like, you know, 3.2 by 2.5 to 2.5 to 2.0. These are like the standard crystals. And that's what you have on this sci-fi board. And then of course, we're gonna look at the load capacitance and the ESR. If you get the load capacitance or ESR significantly off, your crystal's not gonna oscillate. You're gonna be Bummed. So let's check out what they recommend. 12 picofarad, 80 ohms. So let's go 12 picofarad, 80 ohms. And you know, you can kind of wiggle around. Like it doesn't have to be exact. I mean, like I shouldn't say that, but like it's the truth. And then you got a lot of choices. Um, you know, there's, you're, you're gonna pay for a wider operating temperature. You're gonna pay for frequency stability, um, 10 ppm is gonna be, of course, more expensive than 100 ppm. Also the frequency tolerance. So like how close is it to the frequency and how much does it stay within that temperature, oh, to that frequency over the temperature range. You know, the better, the more expensive. So it's up to you to decide, um, but you can just look at, you know, the, the least expensive one, which I think I ended up with this one, the FA238. Um, so this one is plus or minus 50 ppm, 10 picofarad, 80 ohms. And it's got like, yeah, it's this classic four uh, pad um, SMD package. Two pins are actually connected to the crystal. They're, they're kitty cornered. And the other two are just mechanical stability. Um, just watch, it, it's symmetric. You can, you can flip it either way, which is really nice, but just make sure you get the right two kitty corner because once I didn't, and it was very frustrating to solder it on in the right place. So, you know, just make sure that your package is correct. Um, other than that, like, you know, you can get a crystal for like 12, 20 cents. And then, yeah, you just figure out like, what is your temperature scale that you're operating at? And what is the frequency requirement you have? You know, you will probably back calculate from the thing that's the most precise you have to deal with. Are you generating HDMI? Are you connecting over high speed USB? Are you doing uh, TTL? Uh, you know, LVDS display driving. All these things are going to affect what your timing requirements are. Um, you know, if you need, you know, long-term timing, you probably have a separate RTC. Uh, but for, you know, every day, just keeping your device running at the frequency you think, crystals, it's where it's at. And that's the great search.